Welcome to Groundhog Day, America. The speaker stalemate on Capitol Hill showing no signs of stopping, and it's unclear who will blink first. Republicans are locked in a fierce battle over who should hold the gavel. The House taking a break until 8 p.m. after Kevin McCarthy lost his sixth vote for speaker. Republicans backing him say, enough with the nonsense. It's time to move forward so they can go after Joe Biden. This 20's gotten together and decided that they can not only blackmail the Republican conference, in effect, they're blackmailing the American people. There's headlines about the chaos, this and that. Yesterday, our colleagues on the other side of the aisle were tweeting their bags of popcorn that they had out. They love it. I plead with all, all of my Republican colleagues, let cooler, more rational heads prevail. <laughs> I've had a number of conversations with Kevin and, and just basically told him that at some point this needs to break loose. Uh, he either needs to uh, make a deal or uh, he needs to step aside and give somebody else a chance to do that. But the 20 plus Republicans who oppose Kevin McCarthy aren't giving up. I think the path is very difficult right now for Kevin. But at the core of this is, yes, we were successful in taking back the majority, but we still have to deal with the realities of governing here in Washington. And a one-day delay or a two-day delay, even a three-day delay, does not stop us from being able to do the things that we were elected to do. And the Democrats smell an opportunity. AOC thinks the Republican infighting could potentially open the door for her party to gain some extra power. Is there anyone in their caucus that can build that consensus? If there isn't, uh, McCarthy's team may have to come to the Democratic Party. And if that's the case, then what would that even look like? Could we get Democratic chairs of committees uh, as a result? If he chooses to approach uh, the Democratic caucus, then that would be a negotiation in and of itself for a potential coalition government. Okay, Greg, I'll start with you on this political issue. Well, first, uh, uh, I haven't asked the question. I don't need a question. I already have my strong feelings. This is not Groundhog Day at all. It's the opposite of Groundhog Day. Because in the movie, he actually got better. Remember every day? Yeah, learn this is something. The, this is the opposite. He's not, no one's learning anything. It's anti-Groundhog Day. Poor Kevin McCarthy. He's lost more ballots than a Democratic poll worker. <laughs> so, sue me. Anyway, uh, I'm starting to change my mind on this. I want it to go on forever. Yeah. It's like an extra inning game that, like, when it's on, you go, it's at the 22nd inning, you want it to go to 27, you want to go to, how long could this go? It's like a, a, a horrifying spectacle. But it's also, it's also hypnotic, and everybody says, oh, you know, dem uh, what is it, democracy is messy. Oh, stop it. It's, everybody knows this is just a pain. The, but I love how the Democrats act like this is some kind of catastrophe. Maybe. But it's self-contained, right? It's self-contained. It's not affecting Americans, the, you know, the way Afghanistan or the border or inflation. So at least, you know, when Republicans have a firing squad, it's circular. But the Democrats <laughs> shoot everybody. So I like that. I like that. And I, my, here's my, my last point. I have a theory that this is all being done uh, because it's like they, they love to revert to being college kids pulling an all-nighter. So this is just an excuse to order 50 pizzas and make us pay for it. Oh, well, <laughs> that certainly explains it. Thank you, Greg. Dana, how long, do you, how long do you think McCarthy stays on? Look, he's been voted. He hasn't been able to get to 218 in six votes. Yeah. And Victoria Sparks now is voting present twice. She says she's that she's something. doing that because she wants a discussion. She, yeah. So why do they just keep voting? Do they yeah. think that God's going to come down and say, everybody change your vote? And he was, and she was quite close with Kevin McCarthy, and yeah. so that one's got to hurt. But I think mm -hmm. you know Ken Buck, you also heard him say, you know, at some point, guys, we have to do something. Um, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of democracy. It's been two days, and it could go for a few more, but it probably won't. I think today there was no movement towards Kevin McCarthy. There was a slight movement back. So yeah. they're a little bit out of stalemate. So I think the other thing that's happening is that the name calling is getting ratcheted up within the party. And they are going to get through this. There will be a speaker at some point, And then they're all going to have to work together. And they're saying a lot of things that are going to be very difficult to forget and hard to forgive. So I think there's only one solution that they should do tonight, which is... Drunk. Get drunk. Yes. Yeah. That everybody needs to go to the bar. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be open bar. And they need to all get drunk and like have a moment because that's what you do with a team when you're having a little bit of a problem. I'm not saying, look, actually, yes, I am saying, go get drunk. <laughs>
<laughs> and just like every, check the phones at the door. Mm -hmm. No one can take a phone in. And everyone just have a chance to talk about something. Trump in his statement today said, why are you giving up this opportunity to celebrate? You got back the majority, and you're blowing it, guys. Right. And right. I th thought he had a good point. The last thing I wanted to mention is I feel like they're forgetting these lessons that happened during the Boehner and Paul Ryan years, mm -hmm. which is if you don't give your team the votes, then whoever the speaker is going to be, and that might not be McCarthy, maybe it's somebody else, at that point, let's say it's the debt ceiling, if you don't have the votes of your team, then you're going to have to go get them somewhere else for, like, must-pass legislation. Where do you get them? Well, from moderate Democrats. What does that do? That opens up the legislation to allow Democrats to change things to their will, which makes the outliers even more mad. And then they can point to them and say, you're so establishment. It's not good, a good exercise. And the other thing is they're missing this opportunity. Today, what did Biden announce? Under the cover of all of this, his intention is to go to the border. After the Republicans have been saying he needed to go for two years. Now, who's going to talk about that in the morning? No one, because they're going to talk about this. It does, Jesse, or does, getting drunk. Does McCarthy, <laughs> in order to get 218 votes, does he try to build a coalition with moderate Democrats by turning to the Democrats? And if he does succeed, did a lot of people hurt their careers? If he cuts a deal with the Democrats, he's toast. Mm -hmm. Because then he has to give Democrats something. And you can never give Democrats anything. <laughs> I, politics is tough. You get this close to power and your own team kicks you in the groin. Yep. Six times in the groin. <laughs> <sighs> I hate this because I don't like talking about Republican infighting. I have a personal policy not to get involved in Republican primary battles. So I say this under duress. Mm. <laughs> but I feel like this is all my fault because I've been calling... Kevin McCarthy speaker on primetime for about three months. <laughs> I jinxed it. I don't know if he's dead yet, but he's close because <laughs> I've never seen a situation where someone takes someone hostage and their main demand is I want the hostage dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so okay. the hostage has to commit suicide. Yep. yep. It doesn't really I don't, serve the I don't constituency. know how, if he survive, <laughs> is someone else going to go? I, some of me thinks this is personal, like Gates doesn't yep. like him yep. because he didn't back him when the Department of Justice hung that case over his head. Right. But then I listened to Chip Roy on Laura Ingram last night, and Chip Roy said, this is what they don't want. They don't want every Christmas week to the Senate shove trillions of dollars of spending down their throats and say you have 24 hours to vote yes on this or Christmas is over. Yeah. And so they want to be on the rules committee. So does he have to give these guys the rules committee, give the freedoms the rules committee? Is that what more do they want? I feel like they could, he could give the freedoms everything and they want his scalp instead. So yep. I yep. don't know. And Greg nailed it yesterday. I'm with Greg on this. Wake me up when they land the plane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't yep. care if it crashes. I don't care if it lands. <laughs> Wake me up when something yeah, happens. When, when they're ready to do something. The founders were smart, okay. though. He's like, Let you guys sit in the room together. We're going to lock the door. You're not coming out yeah. <laughs> until you guys decide. But I don't feel like I have to be in the smoke-filled room. Why do I have to feel like I'm in the room? And think about it back then. They really smelled bad. Right. now, And now I'm getting the stink on me. <laughs> yes. Okay. You know what? There's a tweet by Cori Bush. I want you to take a look at it, Jessica. Uh, she, well, two uh, African Americans were uh, suggested for speaker on the Democrat side, Hakeem Jeffries, Republican Byron Donalds. And of course, Cori Bush comes out and she says it's not a historic candidate. Uh, Byron is not a historic candidate for speaker. He's a prop. Despite being black, he supports a policy agenda intent on upholding and perpetuating white supremacy. What do you think of that? not very nice. Um, I have talked a lot about people supporting policies that I do not think is in their best interest, whether it's women, people of color, other disadvantaged, traditionally disadvantaged groups. Um, obviously, that doesn't help. And, and Cori Bush, I think, has really supplanted AOC as the biggest thorn in the Democrat side in all of this. AOC has really gotten in line. You notice even how she conducts herself in interviews, the people that she talks to. I mean, I've seen from the coverage of what's going on, on the floor, she's talking to more Republicans than almost any other Democratic member of the House, right? It's not going particularly far with Matt Gates or Paul Gosar, for instance, but She's out there trying to figure out some way that Democrats can maintain. Well, why would Cory Bush say that? 
because she thinks that he's an Uncle Tom. Does she think that if you're a black person who supports the Republican Party, that it strips away your blackness because Republican policies do not, to, in Cori Bush's mind, do not benefit people of color. That's what it is. It's a stunt right now. It's obviously incredibly unuseful. Um, I'm sure Hakeem Jeffries is not happy about this conversation going on the side. He has a completely unified caucus that shows up every day, 212 votes, 212 votes, 212 votes. And then there's something like this that's a distraction to all of it. So I, it's not useful. Okay. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.